and my dear young friends. I am very happy to be here to share some of our experiences based on the studies that we have been conducting in different parts of the country during the last 23-24 years. Many of the ideas that we share now may be new to youngsters and uh, but these are all based on our uh, um, direct field studies and our experiences. We have written about it and then we are speaking about it. So if you have queries and all, we will have it after, the, uh, after my speech uh, presentation. As far as Indian business models are concerned, we have functioning, performing Indian models even today, this 21st century. In fact, our argument is that whatever we have achieved in the last 70 years is largely due to the Indian economic, business and management models. All of us know businesses operate in a particular economic environment. So our own economic models are unique. It has unique characteristics. All of us know about the kind of savings that take place in India. You know, we are one of the high saving economies in the world. And these savings take place at different levels, not... Uh, it is not the educated people alone who save. We have studied at least, we have made at least some 70, 80 studies with regard to savings. And we came to know that these savings take place at different levels. I will tell, give you one example. Some 15 years back, we undertook a study among the lady flower vandas in Coimbatore. These lady flower vandas are so-called uneducated, ordinary people of this uh, country. You know, these women, they even today they operate. They, at that time, you know, they did not even have the money to buy their daily requirements of flowers. So they come with the basket in their hands at about 6 o'clock. They go to the other side of the uh, market where wholesalers are there. They, but before that, they'll go to the financiers. Financiers will come and wait for them at 6, 6.15. So each of them used to borrow 1,000 rupees every day. Now it is slightly more. And they go to the other side, buy the flowers, and then go and sit in their respective places. By about 1, 1.30, they would have sold all the flowers, thereby earning a profit of about 300, 350, sometimes even 400 rupees. But again, by about 1.30, the financiers uh, will come back. And then they return the money that they had borrowed in the morning, 1,000 rupees with 100 rupee interest, you know, very high rate of interest. And that is how the idea for Mudra was born. So, 100 rupee interest. But even then, they will be left with uh, 250, 300 rupees. And they will not take the 250, 300 back home. By 2 o'clock, a Chitfandwala will come. They used to... I gave 100 rupees every day to that chit fund wala. And they would go home with only the balance amount, maybe 150, sometimes 100, 200 at all. We calculated at that time, in one particular market, the savings was 7,30,000 rupees per annum. And this is the kind of saving that India is making at different levels. At non-corporate level, if you see, we have seen the uh, clusters, you know, business industrial centers, where 90% of the savings are ploughed back, at least during the initial period, 10 years, 15 years. And these people, entrepreneurs who get enormous amount of profit sometimes, they don't uh, spend the money for their own building, their own bungalows or getting luxury items, etc. But they reinvest. And this is the level at which savings are being uh, taking place in the country. Because as all of us know, saving is part and parcel of Indian life. So this is one aspect. If we see these financial, financing me mechanisms of India, methods of India, you know, different parts of India, 
the local societies they have devised their own methods and this is very important <coughs> they are all so called ordinary people most of them are not even highly educated people but they have devised their own methods financing methods based on the local cultural social backgrounds if we take tamil nadu uh, for example the uh, financing method adopted by the entrepreneurs society in the southern tamil nadu is different from the financing methods adopted by the western tamil nadu from where i come from this is completely different in southern tamil nadu for example most of the entrepreneurs especially one particular community a community called nadars some 70 80 years back they were all very ordinary people palmyra tree uh, uh, they climb up the palmyra tree and then uh, they do the related works study tapas so these they, you know these people when they wanted to enter into business activities they did not know how to mobilize funds but all of them sit decided sat and decided that each uh, person each family person means a family should contribute out of every 1 rupee some quarter paise in those days 70 80 years back it is so they went before the amman deity for them the common deity is amman lady deity so they went and took a vow that wherever we go and settle or wherever our villages are we contribute this much percentage of amount this they called it as mahamai mahamai in tamil you know over the years this kind of mahamai mechanism grew and uh, as a result today they are one of the uh, top most entrepreneurial communities in the entire country 70% of the tamil nadu's uh, departmental uh, sorry grocery shops are owned by them they are here in delhi also mumbai also wherever tamilians are there they have their grocery shops and uh, later i'll explain to you later they entered into different businesses um, um businesses like uh, fire crackers um match sticks printing press uh, and then they promoted this one of the country's best known most profitable bank called tamil nadu mercantile bank they were all promoted by them very ordinary community through this mahamai mechanism if you take our western tamil nadu most of our people for all their entrepreneurial and even other activities uh, they involve themselves in chit funds and chit fund is not just an economic activity it is a social cultural activity because every one month every two months when they assemble uh, they assemble not just for the business purposes but they go and assemble in their members families residences if today it is in my family next month it will be arvind ji's family like that so go with family with children and then the day is spent as a kind of celebration so this is an economic cultural social activity through this method i know we have hundreds of people who have become very very successful entrepreneurs and these chit funds are uh, maybe in lakhs in some some cases crores if somebody wants to promote a business if he needs let us say some some uh, two crores then he assembles 20 people each willing to contribute 10 lakhs over a period of two years or one and a half years or so and this is how financing mechanisms take place throughout the country different places different mechanisms all developed by the local people based on their social and cultural backgrounds no mba professor there no finance expert there they are all what we call very very ordinary people and if we take the entrepreneurial uh, development of india in the last 60 70 years particularly it's completely native entrepreneurship completely native i was mentioning earlier about this southern tamil nadu community there is a place called sivakasi sivakasi today is known to everybody because uh, sivakasi makes almost 80 to 85 percent of the fire crackers in india at one point of time it was 90% and uh, 60 to 60 now 60% of the matchbox has come from sivakasi it's not only that 30% of india's offset printing works take place there 
foreign banking companies they print their checkbooks there this airline companies of many countries across the globe they print their airline tickets there all high security items they print there some 80 years back it was a very very ordinary place nothing was there two people in fact that place was not even suitable for agriculture it was uh, it had only the salty water so as a result many people did not even prefer to uh, engage in agriculture two people decided to do something they did not to know what to do one of their relatives said you go to kolkata where there is uh, now it is not there but there was vimco factory arvind ji may be knowing elders may be knowing so they went and worked there not as executives very ordinary low level workers in a period of one and a half years they knew how to mix these chemicals which is necessary for uh, matchstick they returned back and set up their first unit there and today sivagasi is an internationally known place because you know it's a center for uh, this firecrackers center for this matchboxes and the best priced diaries in, it, in the whole world are made there so, diary diaries diaries yes 10 years back arunji uh, um, in washington uh, shivakasi person introduced a diary highest priced diary in the whole world some 25000 at that time now it is 40 50000 and i was told that in very many foreign countries especially us their diaries are preferred nightingale brand diaries so this is how they have developed this is the kind of entrepreneurship that we see here you take rajkot for example some uh, 60 years back till 1960s there was not much activity one patel when he wanted to um, take water out of the ground ground you know they were having electricity problems so he purchased the one diesel engine so uh, while he was using it he started to disassemble it and then assembled it it worked so two three people joined together and thought you know why don't we uh, make diesel engines and that is how it was born when we went there some 15 20 years back we met one of the original promoters of the industry there and they said sir this is this idea came out of the blue when we were working uh, when we were using this uh, diesel engines for ourselves we thought why don't we make ourselves so that is how they started this and you know till about 10 years 15 years back um rajkot based diesel engines were the best diesel engines in india and i know i come from coimbatore which is an industrial area we all were using either field marshal or standard agro diesel engines in all our factories and these two both these brands belong to rajkot in fact there is a in- interesting story behind it they were telling us you know till 1960s only the british company was selling the diesel engines in india that company's brand name was leicester you know particular county leicester and when these people started making this diesel engines uh, they did not know how to gra- give brand name for it so they gave a name leicester type machine leicester type and 65 70 sales were declining the britishers came to know in western uh, india sales of their diesel engines were uh, declining so they flew down to india went to mumbai and then gujarat and then found out these local people were making uh, leicester type machines then they told them you cannot make it is our brand name you have to supply it to us they said no no we are not going to supply it to you we want to make our own diesel engine and that is how standard agro and then field marshal were born so after uh, in a period of about 30 years they completely um, uh, dominated the indian diesel engine sector so whether you know now in rajkot they make all kinds of engineering products when we went there they invited us about 15 years back you know there is a, a quotation by ford motors then chairman which is there in their small scale industry association buildings you know the uh, late ford had said that whenever any new automobile comes up whether it is in us or in any part of the world these rajkot people make the best spare parts within 3 months 
this is what he had said so this is how our entrepreneurship has been growing in the last 50 60 years i have many many interesting stories to tell you but it will take time and completely native entrepreneurship native entrepreneurship and the third and most important the fourth aspect is the development economic development business development is completely society driven and it's not state dependent in fact uh, we are all engaged uh, in this kind of work under the guidance of our uh, um, Guru Murthy Ji. So we know when we started our work some 20-23 years back, when the government started interacting with us, then we came to know government does not know anything about what is happening at the ground level. Because one of our, uh, my own first book was on Karur, uh, Karur uh, Non-Corporate Sector Finance. You know, Karur is an industrial center in Tamil Nadu. Karur makes the um, makes homemade textiles, what we call homemade textiles. These green cloths, table cloths are made by them. And they export to all the countries, Europe, America, all continents. And um, this Karur is in western part of Tamil Nadu. Uh, when we went and studied there, uh, we came to know that uh, for the Karur exports, now exports is around 6,000 crores, some 20 years back it was less. So when we went there, when we went and studied there, we came to know two-thirds of their financial requirements, two-thirds of their financial requirements were met through the local uh, financiers, what we call non-corporate finance entities, you know, two, three, four people joined together promote their own finance entity and then do business. But at that time, when they invited us at that time, they had 52 bank branches in that place. And Karur people themselves had promoted one bank, Karur Vaishya Bank. And they were associated with another scheduled bank, Lakshmi Vilas Bank. We went and met the chairman board of directors. In fact, Gurumurji was there with us. We went and met all of them. You know, on the one hand, the uh, uh, exporters were uh, asking us, sir, we need more and more money, So, uh, but banks are not willing to give money. Uh, so we had to go to these non-corporate finance entities. Who are these non-corporate finance entities? Local people themselves. They promote and then do business. When we went and uh, talked to the board of directors of both these banks, they told us, sir, we have enough funds. Only thing is, bank, uh, these exporters are not coming to us. When we went and asked them, you know, banks are willing to give funds, why are you not going? They said, sir, we are in export industry, so when somebody, we get an order from Europe or America, we have to fulfill that order within one and a half months, two months. So we need immediate funds, quick funds. If we go to the bank, then we have to fulfill all formalities, which takes one week, ten days. But when we go to the local financiers, he grants funds immediately. Because in the non-corporate sector finance world, you know, they give loans, especially in these clusters, based on the background of a person. They know who is uh, who is who. So if they know their backgrounds. They know that this person will not default. Because they know they have a system. Otherwise, you know, they will find out somebody's background and then disperse the amount immediately. So they said, sir, even though the rate of interest is high here, we prefer to go to the non-corporate finance uh, uh, entities because we can get funds very, very easily, quickly. This is what we want. So when we studied the whole system, we came to know that in the non-corporate uh, financial system, there was no uh, bad debts at all. Everybody was repaying money. When we asked them what is the secret, then they said, the finance uh, entity people said, Sir, when we make a recomm uh, like a recommendation to give money to the somebody, then one of the promoters himself, partners himself will take the responsibility. If he is not paying, then I will pay. So this is the kind of me mechanism that they follow. And you will be surprised to know that they have what we call credit sharing uh, system. You know, if somebody defaults in a particular entity, then this news is shared with all others, even though all others are competitors. You know, this is very important. This we see in Indian businesses in many places. 
even though they we in modern terms i am a management teacher we call them as competitors but they share the information with others so that others will not get duped so this is how they function so when we made a book out of this and then at that time in 2001 um nda government was there there was one planning commission member by name dr sp sukla when we came and presented to him he said oh is this kind of india do we have this kind of india here then he said you give us 50 more cup 50 copies of your book and this is how we came to know that uh, uh, much of the functioning india is not known to the academic and policy making circuits so this is completely society driven in each and every place it is the society that takes the lead there are two top uh, two uh, transport clusters in india one is sangagiri another one is namakkal both are in tamil nadu sangagiri and namakkal sangagiri has the largest lorry traffic in the whole country namakkal is the second place you know this industry again developed in the last 50 60 years uh, during the last 50 60 years when we went and asked them you know they are all people from ordinary agricultural backgrounds it will be interesting to know that much of the industrial development economic development in the last 60 years is driven by the ordinary people from the agricultural rural communities of course this uh, traditional business communities also play a role but it is the patels gounders nadars reddies who are taking the lead in the last 50 60 years when we asked them you know how did you enter into this transport business otherwise you were in agriculture they said sir uh, in those days in selam particular town selam region Uh, we were uh, our people were growing this beetle leaves beetle leaves this beetle leaves from selam were going to mumbai uh, chennai etc by train so to carry the beetle leaves uh, farmers used to uh, operate this bullock carts so the, through this bullock carts they used to carry this uh, beetle leaves to selam railway station and one of them thought why don't we engage an industry uh, lorry so that is how one purchased lorry but that person did not have enough money so he uh, took three f- help of his two three friends and all of them invested their money purchased one lorry and that is how transport industry was grown and today the two important centers at the national level number 1 and number 2 are in uh, almost same place the sangagiri and namakkal and this is how businesses are growing completely society driven when we studied the background of the sangagiri lorry operators we came to know that about 40% of them were before coming to this transport uh, uh, business they were they were uh, um, engaged in cattle grazing not even agriculture below that they were have, oh, having three cows three bullocks uh, you know three buffaloes you know managing their lives with that they entered this business and today you know they are the largest uh, lorry owners in this country there are people who own 200 lorries 300 lorries and when we met one of them they said sir i own two ships also you see that kind of diversification that we made in 2001 we had the swadeshi industrial fair in coimbatore which was inaugurated by the then prime minister ratel bihari vajpay so when we invited this cluster operators to come and talk to uh, the educated sections you know especially the academicians and the officials you know the at that time the all india lorry owners association president was one singodan from that namakkal sagagiri place and but he did not even uh, know the english uh, did not even know english so he spoke only in tamil for the large audience but he was one of the most knowledgeable persons on lorry he started his life as a cleaner and then went on to become a driver then he at that time he was owning 200 lorries so if we see the development of these places completely society driven today coimbatore has a turnover of almost 1 lakh 20000 crore turnover business if you take surat there are only two businesses textile textile is worth 90000 crores annual diamond trade 80000 crores annual combined both to 1 lakh 70000 crores 
one center, two businesses, one lakh seventy thousand crores, completely society driven. No government investment, whether you take Coimbatore or Surat or Tirupur or Namakkal or Rajkot. In fact, when we went there for the first time, we asked them, Sir, you are doing so well in uh, engineering. How many engineering colleges you have? They took us outside the building and then showed us, Sir, you see there, far off, now we are building an engineering college. We are building an engineering college. So it is not the engineering colleges that build the industrial centers. It is the industrial centers that build the engineering colleges. So this is how in India development has been growing. As a result, in all, they are not state dependent. They are completely self dependent to a very, very large extent. So whether it is their financing mechanisms, in fact, even the government, uh, uh, in fact, even the government data shows that in about 85 to 90 percent of the cases in business, in some cases more than 95 percent, uh, financing is through the self-financing uh, mechanism. Either they use their own funds, family funds, borrow from friends, relatives, or local financiers but the role of banks and financial institutions are very less single digit five six five percent six percent seven percent so the dependence on government and government institutions state institutions is very very less uh, in our economic activities so we have a unique kind of economic model that is functioning performing even today so i want to emphasize because many youngsters are here you need not have any doubt that we have a very vibrant operating uh, economic system that is working here in India. So the businesses that we operate in India today, whether it is non-corporate, corporate or these SME sectors, they are all based on the, the this economic model. So the um, businesses also uh, our businesses also, whether it is non-corporate, even corporate sector to a very large extent are unique. You know, as far as non-corporate sector is concerned, it is contributing almost, if we take the family-based sector, SME, it may be 35% to the GDP of this country. But if you include all these uh, uh, agriculture and other non-corporate related items, all of us know this non-corporate sector contributes almost two-thirds to the national GDP. The corporate sector contributes only about 14 to 15% of uh, national income. Uh, out of it, if we take the uh, highly rated corporates, maybe 1% or so. Otherwise, in India, non-corporate sector has a huge role to play and the entire non-corporate sector is operated by families. Families. So, India is a completely family-based economy, family-based business systems, especially in the uh, non-corporate sector. So, that is why their financing mechanisms their ways of operation and uh, uh, their uh, different ways of promotion are completely based on families. You know, here we have to understand one important thing. Families play a very, very important and dominant role in our economic and business activities. So if we see the, um, start with the um, financing, as I explained to you, it is the families that contribute almost anywhere between 40 to 70 percent of the funds at the non-corporate level, non-corporate level. In some cases it may be even 90 percent or 100 percent. In fact, whenever we meet the small SME sector entrepreneurs, they used to say, Sir, we, I never borrowed from bank or financial institution. At least during the beginning of three years, five years, they feel that it is their duty to uh, get money from their own local sources and not to go and depend on banks because if the business fails then uh, you know the he or she may have to pay interest and then run into difficulties so this is how our uh, businesses source their funds and here families and relatives also play a very very important role which we don't recognize i remember again when we went and talked to the rajkot entrepreneurs those times you know many of them said Sir, we all come from villages in and around this area. Uh, 
we come here learn the business for 3 years 4 years 5 years and the, when we go back to our villages villages announce that we are going to set up our own unit then our own friends and relatives come to us give funds to us some may be giving 2000 some may be giving 5000 some may be giving 10000 and this is how communities contribute even today even today we have seen in many places we have studied i have studied in detail especially tamil nadu gujarat and to an extent punjab in detail in all these places we have seen the um, way the communities uh, um, um, help entrepreneurship to grow and this is how it has been happening this is one second families uh, contribute to the business economic development of this country in very many ways we all know whether uh, especially in non corporate sector let us assume somebody is having a grocery shop so the wife after uh, about uh, 8 30 9 o'clock finishing her household activities sending children to school she will come and sit in the uh, shop for about two hours husband will go out maybe buy from the wholesale uh, wholesale market daily requirements and then she when uh, she will um, when he will return she again will go back she will come on, uh, once again in the evening at seven o'clock with children and this is how families participate i remember reading an article in epw some time back you know the similar thing was happening in london all some of many of us may be knowing in London also, these grocery shops, many of the grocery shops are owned by our own Gujaratis, Patels. In fact, foreigners were surprised to see this kind of family involvement in these businesses. But it is happening across the country uh, in all businesses, economic activities. And here, one aspect that we have to emphasize is the role that the women play. Women play a very, very important role in economic business development of our country. Even though we may not be knowing about it, we see only when they sit in the office or run the businesses as promoters, CEOs, even otherwise they play a very, very, very important role. In fact, wherever we go, whenever we meet the entrepreneurs, and we have met hundreds of them, when we ask them what is the background for your success, of course they will mention about their fathers, but they particularly mention about the role played by their own mothers and then wives, um, even grandmothers, even sisters. I, we have an interesting um, study. When we studied this hotel industry, you may be knowing Vasanda Bhavan, Ananda Bhavan, Ari Bhavan hotels, they are in Delhi also and they are now in different countries. So we studied them about 13-14 years back because all these hotels, promoters of these hotels come from Tamil Nadu, central part of Tamil Nadu, three villages. They all belong to originally three villages in that area. So when we went and studied them, 20% of them said, Sir, when we wanted the uh, funds initially, it is our married sisters who helped us. So sisters after their marriages go to the husband's families, nudge their husbands, compel their husbands to provide funds to the brother, their brothers. And this is how 20% have we ever imagined it. So the kind of relationship uh, that we have in our businesses. And I have many, many interesting stories. I may not have time to tell you. But this is how... Uh, Women play a very, very important role. I'll maybe, I'll tell one or two instances. It will be very interesting. There is a big uh, educational group called Vivekananda group in a place called Namakkal in Western Tamil Nadu. You know, Western Tamil Nadu uh, is a, an entrepreneurial, native entrepreneurial model by itself, completely built by the local community. Today it contributes almost 50% to Tamil Nadu GDP. We have about, yes, 50%, slightly more than 50%. We have about 10, 12 clusters in Western Tamil Nadu alone. Coimbatore, Tirupur, you may be knowing, contributing 40% of the netted garment exports of India. Tirupur, Karur, uh, Namakkal, Sangagiri, Salem, Tiruchangodu, about which I will inform later. So these are all the prominent national level, international level clusters in one region. 
in fact uh, when we study we come to know the economically advanced states of india whether it is punjab or gujarat or tamil nadu uh, whatever it is they are all driven by the uh, entrepreneurial communities based in these states so whether you take punjab or gujarat or tamil nadu their economic development in the last 50 60 years is based on the entrepreneurial drive of these communities in these states even within these states if we see only those regions which are dominated by these entrepreneurial communities that push the economic uh, drive so that is why western tamil nadu contributes 50% to uh, this you know there is a, a, a group which is now having 27 educational institutions some 10 engineering colleges seven eight arts colleges dental college all colleges they have one only one family only one family so some 12 years back they organized an international conference uh, conference uh, it's on management you know when they approached me you know what topic do we have to give you know the all these 27 colleges have only women girls oh ah, they say it is the largest women campus in the whole of asia you know we have they have students from nepal bhutan all parts of india and they take care of the girls so well that every parent would like to send because when they send the send them to back their homes during holidays till railway station till the children go and sit you know somebody will be there similarly when they come back they will go and receive so this is the kind of arrangement that they have so as a result they are very popular name so all their colleges have uh, vivekananda prefix vivekananda arts college vivekananda arts and science college vivekananda college of science so this is how so i was giving the inaugural address the chairman of that college was there so he had already spoken initially for about 2 3 minutes so after my speech the session was about to end then tea break then first session so after my i explained the role that the women play in indian economy then he said sir i want to speak for another 3 4 minutes you have to permit i said sir you please speak then he went up to the dais and he said you know i have listened to this professor speaking about the role of women uh, in indian economy today i should confess something otherwise otherwise i will feel guilty all along i have not told this secret to anybody but today i have to tell because some of my own principles are also sitting here then he said you all have a feeling that i come from a rich very rich family i am you know coming in bmw car having all kinds of facilities he said yes today i own all these things but he said 27 years back i was a very very ordinary man very ordinary man i had just b farm degree pharmacy degree i was getting only uh, 700 rupees salary per salary my father had only 3 acres of land that to dry land i was married uh, just 4 months before it an incident took place two people came to my uh, house from salem nearby town they said sir we are operating a um, pharmaceutical institute offering the certificate courses diploma courses very small institute in your town namakkal town and uh, we want to close it because it's very difficult for us to come from salem and run it so when we approached the government government said you cannot close it you can transfer it to somebody who has this b farm degree and we found out you are the only person having this degree <laughs> this district so you please take we will offer you some 10 15% discount mm-hmm. then i said uh, you know i am a newly married man i am getting only 700 rupees salary i am happy with that and uh, i don't have money for it so please i raise i told them you please go out because i don't have my money they went out then after that my wife came out and told me how did you, why did you send them out i said i don't have money she said i have my jewelry you know you can sell it and then start business i said it won't be fair on my part because we are newly married so that is how it ended then after 15 days those again those two people came they said sir we searched the nearby district also no b farm degree holder so you have to buy <laughs> we will offer you 50% discount but this time my wife came out and said sir we will give you some good news uh, you come after a week you see how ladies uh, uh, you know behave 
they she did not say you go and come we will offer you will try to give you some good news so you come after me so after she, they left my wife told me you don't worry god is giving uh, coming uh, to us for the second time you take my jewelry go and uh, uh, pledge it in our uh, local cooperative bank because in their village there was not even a bank cooperative society only you enter into this if we fail don't worry i will be with you so this is how i entered into this education business field and today i have 27 educational institutions he said all this is due to my wife he said one more thing you know after i earned some money money i could have taken that jewelry out of that cooperative society but i purposely kept it for 25 years 23 years that was the 25th year i when i went there so that he said my children should know that all my development is not due to me but due to the sacrifice of my wife this is what he said so we learn stories and stories like this wherever we go the kind of um, contribution that women make even grandmothers we all uh, have a feeling that grandmothers especially uh, those who are not much, much educated they don't have anything to uh, contribute but uh, in many places we have seen the uh, contributions made by grandmothers i will narrate one small incident very briefly it happened some 64 5 years back you know tirupur today is the largest uh, hosiery exporting center in india its turnover both domestic and ex export is about 65000 crores um, so this incident took place in a village between tirupur and avinashi which is a temple town there was one boy at that time he was a boy 11 year old he fails in his third standard come back home tells his father father i have failed in third standard father shouts at him how can you lead your life you know we don't have enough water in our well and you have a younger brother uh, who is studying and sister elder sister to marry so what are you going to do this boy did not know anything so but after some time he said okay don't worry from tomorrow i will send you to avinashi nearby town which is about 6 kilometers from his place there i have a friend who is owning a tea shop you go and learn the art of making tea and then after 2 3 months i will set up a shop in the main road tirupur you know that time budding uh, business center you can make a living boy was happy because he need not go to school but <laughs> you know every day he used to go and meet his grandmother his grandmother lives 2 kilometers from his own farm house so you know in our system maternal grandmothers have special affection for grandsons so every day he used to go and meet her uh, that particular day he went and told her grandma i failed in my third standard so father has asked me to go to tea work and tea shop grandma got angry not because her grandson failed in third standard but because he has to go to tea shop and then wash somebody else's tumblers he was she was unhappy so she took her grandson went to her daughter's house argued with her son in law how can you send my grandson to tea shop for which father asked what what can i do will your grandson get a collector's job failed in third standard she said no no let him go to banian factory which is 12 kilometers from his village tirupur and son in law agreed because mother in law says so that is how, that, that is how that is how he started his um, um, you know life in banian industry you know he narrated when he narrated his experience three times he cried before me wept before me you know 12 kilometers from his village to tirupur every no buses in those days every day he had to walk 24 kilometers in those days no watches or clocks his mother used to wake him up at 2 o'clock sometimes seeing the stars and then he got to go and sit at 4 o'clock in the factory whereas factories used to open at 6 o'clock only so that is how he worked very hard managed some mobilized some funds and then he wanted to start his own business but because he did not have education uh, you know he found out somebody working in the company as manager a degree holder ba degree holder in those days very high qualification he went and told him i will contribute money you join me as a partner uh, because you have education and experience let us run the business that person agreed both of them started business 
two years it was going very well. But one fine morning when we went there, he found out that his shutters of his shop was closed. Neighbors told him, you know, your partner had already run away uh, with all the um, investment that you had. He did not know what to do. He lost all that he had earned in the last 14 years. He went and filed a police complaint, then went back home. Father shouted at him, I told you 14 years back, I asked you to set up a tea shop. He did not know what to do. He went to his grandma and then fell at her lap and then cried. She said, why are you worried? I am here. I have my jewelry. You take it, you sell it tomorrow, you withdraw the file, police case. Police will not do anything. You see an ordinary woman advising him. Don't, police will not do anything. You withdraw the case. Why do you have that case? But you start your business. But this time, don't join with somebody. You start business on your own. And that is how he started his business as a sole proprietor. Again, he worked very hard. You know, he used to tell me at that time, only one sewing machine. 18 hours he used to work. Sleeping, eating on the same sewing machine only. After two years, he gets a very important export order to Europe. He invests all his money and makes finest uh, bunions and then sends it. You know, unfortunately at that time, Iran Iraq was going on. Arvind ji may be knowing much better that period, I think 70s. So unfortunately, the ship carrying his goods uh, was devastated by bombs. Um, so he lost everything. Again, the news came to him and he was completely disappointed. Uh, so, you know, interesting story, he decided to commit suicide. So he went and sat in the uh, railway station at 4 o'clock in the evening. You know, when he went and uh, was sitting there, he saw many of his known faces passing by. Then he thought, this is not the correct time to commit suicide, let the sun, sun set. But before that, he remembered his grandma. One soul is living for us. Let us tell her before committing suicide. So he runs to her grandma's farmhouse, 14 kilometers, goes and tells her, grandma says, you are just 27, 28 years old. You know, life is a very long period. Don't imagine that you have failed in 15 years, failed for 15 years, 16 years. You will fail throughout the life. You have enough of life. And why are you worried? I am here. I have four acres of land. You take two acres tomorrow, I will give it to you. Anyhow, I am going to give it to your mother only, other two acres to your aunt. So you take it, you sell it, but you start once again business. And he started business, and today he is the largest domestic seller in India. Largest domestic player, because at that time he decided no more exports. <laughs> India is a huge market, why should we export? So that is how he started. Today he is the largest domestic player in India. He is the president of the South India Hosayari Manufacturers Association. Today he has more than 2,000 work employees working under him. If I tell his brand name, many of you will be able to reconnect. Brand name is Viking brand. Viking brand that you see in TV is Anand Baniyans. You know, another brand name. His name is Iswaran. He is still there. So how can we say that? Our grandmothers do not have any role in economic development. It's completely driven by the sacrifice, dedication, affection of our family members, especially women. So we hear hundreds and hundreds of such stories. So Indian businesses are largely driven by families. And the kind of entrepreneurship that we see in India, it's completely native model. Without the involvement of educational institutions, outsiders, and you know, many of these business centers are now playing important role at the state level, national level, and international level also. We know about Tirupur, we know about Rajkot, we know about Surat. Surat, for example, now our exporters are dominating the international diamond market. About 70% of international diamond trading takes place through Indians, most of them Patels and Jains. So this is the kind of uh, 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 um, businesses that we are doing. And if we see the diversification, expansion, innovations that are taking place, amazing. So that is why we say Indian business models are now working, performing, succeeding at the national and international level. If you see all these uh, export centers, whether it is Surat or Tirupur or Karur, 
most of the businesses in these centers were promoted by very ordinary people of this country i know when we studied kar you know ahmedabad and surat diamond exporters about 12 years back we took uh, uh, we took up 35 top exporters and then when we studied the background you will be surprised to know 23% of them were illiterates illiterate but they are going and doing business in belgium succeeding at the international level tirupur a professor from london business school came down to tirupur he was there for 11 months he studied the background of the tirupur promoters you will be surprised to know 25% of the exporters have study had studied below 5th standard 75% of them below school 11th standard below now we have plus 2 in those days 11th sslc 11th and below and they go and succeed in the international market whom are they competing with you know multinational companies operated by ivy league post graduate management uh, executives and our people are succeeding so we have enormous business wisdom and the kind of wisdom that we uh, see at the local level amazing i'll tell you one about one place this place you may not may, may not have heard name of this place there is a place called tiruchangodu in tamil nadu it's known for lord ardhana ardhanarishwara big ardhanarishwara temple is there so all south indians go to that temple you know god appears you know ardhanarishwara you know that place today at least till 10 5 5 10 years it was operating more than 90% of the bore wells licks rigs that were functioning in india so jammu kashmir arunachal pradesh gujarat wherever you go these people were operating this people from ordinary uh, agricultural communities again their story was interesting you know when they wanted you know it's a dry place when they wanted to uh, dig well they invited somebody from uh, karnataka and uh, um, um, water came so neighbor also wanted to dig his well he invited so these people neighbor and himself thought thought you know why don't we buy our own rig and then operate this seems this seems to be much better than agriculture so that is how they bought first uh, uh, rig well bore well machine and you know over a period of time 90% of the bore wells in india are operated by these people and we i have very interesting stories experiences about them you know it will tell you it will explain to us as to how these ordinary business centers do what the government cannot do in fact they were narrating an experience uh, uh, to me arvind ji uh, when our uh, sharad pawar was the finance minister uh, chief minister in maharashtra in those days they were telling me that uh, elections were fast approaching and um, many districts of uh, um, maharashtra were facing acute uh, drought so chief minister uh, he was uh, worried because elections are approaching so we might lose the elections if this continues he did not know what to do so one of his uh, officials told him sir there is a, a rig association in tamil nadu in a place called tiruchangodu tiruchangodu rig and borewell association if you contact them they may be able to come and help because they are operating borewells throughout the country and they have thousands of borewells so the chief minister's office contacted them then they came here and then uh, they were asked to uh, divert all their bore wells from across the country you know, operating bore well machines so they went and uh, um, dug wells in maharashtra and within a period of 3 months thousands of uh, new wells with water uh, was there so 70% success they said and the um, uh, then chief minister was very very happy and again one interesting incident so he invited them to come and get funds before the election code of conduct uh, came into force but uh, that time you know they were not able to come they said sir don't worry sir we will come after the elections we will get money cm was very happy you know we they, we have a people who said we will come and get the money after the election no after the election he won for the second time he was so happy then they said sir when we went there he treated us with very respect presented shawls to us and all because they were win they, they were responsible for his winning the election so what a state government could not do a district association did 
and this kind of uh, um, you know approach of these entrepreneurs amazing and you know what they did 20 years back one of them thought why should we dig earth alone why don't we go below the sea and then dig well and that is how they invented a machine which now can go below the sea and then uh, dig the earth today now the entire almost the entire africa they are doing business africa whether it is ghana you know many countries they have their factories they have their factories our tirichangodu people in my opinion our own estimates that is perhaps the most wealthiest center in tamil nadu per capita wealth completely developed by the people themselves no government investment nothing rigwells and then expands and diversification now they are there throughout the world especially in africa so no business school went and advised them no expert went and advised them all on their own and the kind of models that they built amazing we all have a feeling especially those who are in management field as teachers and students that the business models is an idea that could be only developed by the you know what we call people call experts no you know if you take tirichangodu the model that they have you know each uh, business unit will have at least three partners sometimes four or five you know in other places if you see especially these businesses partnership businesses most of the partnership businesses will have relatives or friends as partners this is the system but in tirichangodu of course partners friends are also there they have devised a mechanism where in each uh, business somebody from other than the majority community will be there majority community will be there. this we found out only after a long time we asked them what is the secret they said sir we are operating throughout india throughout india and for about eight months we will be outside our uh, families we will be operating in rajasthan different different places so whenever there is a marriage or death or important events take place if all of all the partners are relatives then all have to come here so that is why we purposely choose one of the partners should be from the local uh, should be from the local area but he should not be from our community can you imagine and i was mentioning earlier about namakkal and sangagiri two transport clusters you know in both these clusters models are different in namakkal sole proprietorship model in sangagiri partnership model when we asked them what is the reason they said sir in namakkal we operate only lpg lorries you know at one point of time 70 percent of the tanker lorries that were running in india were owned by namakkal people now maybe 45 50 percent so completely sole proprietorship but sangagiri which is about 25 kilometers from that place partnership when we asked them the reason they said sir for uh, um, our sangagiri sangagiri has this large huge lorries which 12 tires 14 tires 16 tires so investment is huge so when investment is huge they choose this partnership this model who went and advised them they know so here our management models are working well at the local level this is what we have to do and now this workshop is on value values you know to a large extent our value systems are taken into account in our economic and business models to a large extent i would say i was just mentioning about uh, entrepreneurship you know in all our business centers one entrepreneur will not see other as a competitor it happens only at the larger level competitors you know wherever we go and ask meet the entrepreneurs they will see sir i have created 10 entrepreneurs they will proudly say another person will say 12 entrepreneurs 15 entrepreneurs so whether it is tamil nadu or gujarat this is what we have seen in fact in rajkot uh, people told us as, uh, whenever they join a particular unit and work for it those who want to become entrepreneurs they will not get the monthly salary they will get only 25 percent or 50 percent remaining 20 75 50 they will keep with the employer so that after 55 years if he enters into business he will take the money 
balance with the interest and then uh, start his business. This is happening in Tamil Nadu also, many places also. And invariably, the first order by a newly, uh, by a new businessman will be given to his old employer. Old employer. So it is not uh, competition, it's a kind of cooperation. I remember one particular incident when we started our field studies in Coimbatore. One very prominent, uh, um, you know, uh, fruit, uh, fruit salesman, shop. Uh, there were many loyal employees for him. There were about 30, 40 people working under him. So when one person wanted to set up a shop, you know what he did? He himself arranged a shop just opposite to his shop and then asked his employee who wanted to become an entrepreneur to go and start business there. We asked him, sir, how can you set up, uh, help somebody to set up a shop against your own shop? He said, sir, this is a very big market. He is our own man. Let him also do business. And this is how it is happening. And we all know this kind of takeover code that was introduced some 20 years back in the Western market, acquisition takeovers. Acquisition and takeovers worked in Western countries in the corporate level, but in India it never worked. In fact, I remember I went with Gurumurji when we met some top people in Coimbatore uh, about 15 years back. We asked two top uh, uh, businessmen, industrialists, well known at the national level. Would you be willing to take over somebody else's company? They said, no, we will not be. We will not. We will promote some other company. Why should we go and because somebody is promoted, facing serious problem. If we go and take over somebody else's company, you know, we will not like to, we would not like to do it. Then there are two prominent communities there. He said, both of them said, they are from different, different communities. They said, we will not take uh, um, a company promoted by our own community, man. It will not look good. We will not take over somebody as a company promoted by the other community man also because we will lose respect. And this is how India works. So we have seen this kind of um, um, working system every uh, in every place, in almost every place. So as far as India is concerned, we have a well-functioning economic business and management models here. It may have some uh, uh, difficulties, it may not be perfect, but what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to go study and maybe if possible we can advise, but we need not feel that it's not, it's not there. As far as management systems are concerned, we have well functioning management systems, some of which are very, very unique. I'll tell you about one company. You know, in a particular company in Tamil Nadu, you know how innovatively they use this cultural, uh, cultural base uh, uh, to 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 uh, run their companies. In a particular company, uh, when an employee lives with his parents, additional salary is given, monthly salary. Lady employee living with her in-laws, double the additional salary. It's, it's there. Two companies. Two companies. In fact, uh, um, um, the, the former Jain Irrigation Chairman is no more now. He happened to read my book and then he contacted me. He was particularly impressed with this particular aspect. He asked me, is it true? I would like to meet you. Then we met later. He said, yes sir, this is how it is working. Then he said, I am going to implement this in all my uh, companies. The same thing. Whenever some employee works, lives with his family, then additional salary. Lady employee with her in-laws. You see all these methods to inculcate, to nourish the family values. Like this, there are so many native techniques that are adopted by Indian, even corporate sector. And as a result now, many of the Western universities are coming here and studying about us. You may be knowing, about 10 years back, Kellogg University, four professors came here. They contacted the top 100, 101 uh, companies, interviewed 99 chief executives of these companies, and then later they wrote an article and then book, it appeared in the Harvard Business Issue uh, Review. The title of the article itself is revealing lessons from Indian business models. So they are learning, trying to learn lessons 
from Indian business models. In fact, you go through that book, you will come to know. They have compared the Indian leadership models with that of the Western models, particularly US models. So they are saying how Indian models have are getting success over the years when the Western, Western CEO based corporate models are failing, are failing. They have compared. For us, for many of us, even for me, it was revealing when they compared these details and then they said uh, Indian models are much superior. So we have a well-functioning Indian economic management business models and they are not uh, functioning models. Some of them are performing models. Um, they are role models for the rest of the world, whether it is financing model or entrepreneurial model or the leadership model that the Gerlach process has uh, discussed. So this is how Indian businesses are functioning at the non-corporate level, corporate level. Corporate level, even though we see uh, you know, influence of the Western business schools and all, but in many cases we have seen the Indianized Western versions of the Western approach, not just the Western approach. They, our people have the knack to Indianize these approaches and that is how they function. You know, if you, for example, in the case of finance, if you see the Western corporates, whether it is European companies or American companies, uh, I'm a finance teacher, we teach debt equity ratio, capital reserve ratio, it should be one is to one. If capital is some 10 million dollar or 10 crore, it is enough if you keep 10 crore as a reserve account. Reserves are to meet uh, unexpected contingencies only, they are accumulated profits. So this is our standard model, but you see Indian system, you take any corporate, in most of the corporates, more than 90 percent, you know, the capital that they have will be at least two times, five times, ten times more than the reserves of the capital of the company, reserves that they have. Because saving is inborn, whether you are uh, at a very local level operating a small business or corporate business, so all our corporates will have ten times, twenty times, some cases fifty times more reserves than the capital. That means they are adequately protected. They want to take care of the future. I will narrate an interesting um, uh, case if you want. You know, I was mentioning about Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank, promoted by very ordinary people. Till 2016, 2016, their capital was just 28 lakhs. 28 lakhs. You know, what was the reserve? 150 crores. So that means, assuming, uh, as finance teachers we say, let us assume that the company, this company is going to incur loss. For another at least 550 years the company can run. Why? So much reserve they have got. And what is the kind of dividend that they have been declaring? 900%, 1000%, 1100%. This is the kind of dividend that they have. So our Indian corporate sector is not completely western as we think. If you seek the western corporates, capital reserve will be normally 1 is to 1, but you see here, capital is 28 lakhs, reserve 150 crores. So, so much of reserve we have. So, even if something happens for the next 50 years, the company will be saved, will be saved. And this is the kind of uh, me uh, mechanisms that we have in India. So, to a very to a large extent, even the corporate sector is either Indianized or running their operations on largely native uh, ideas, but non-corporate sector completely native system. So we can be uh, rest assured that in fact our thesis is that the entire Indian economic development, business development of the last 50, 60, 70 years is completely, almost completely based on our native functioning system. You need not think that they are all traditional, no, it is not like that. Our Indians have the capacity, as I told you, somebody promoted this rig, rig business and today they are operating in different countries, countries. And the people who come from Surat and Tirupur, they are all agricultural people, they have no experience with any business earlier. If you take Western Tamil Nadu, I know, now they are into textiles, now they are into transport, now they are into exports, engineering business, completely unconnected with the community 50 years back. 
50 years back and they make new innovations also new innovations we all know this wet grinders wet grinders and Coimbatore is the birthplace of wet grinders when we went and met the original promoter we asked him sir how do you how did you get this idea he said sir we know our grandmothers mothers you know when they want to uh, make idlis dosas next day so they grind rice uh, previous day like this the lower part will remain lower part of the stone permanent the upper part will move the i thought you know why should lower part remain as such and upper part only move why not the uh, lower part move and upper part stands uh, still so that is how the idea for uh, wet grinders came so the wet grinder the lower part only rotates rotates and to, now 90% of the wet grinders are made in Coimbatore and exported to different places wherever Indians and Tamilians live so this kind of native innovations innovations that are taking place enormous innovation I don't have time otherwise I know cases where many people ordinary uneducated people formally uneducated people a third standard person from Tirupur he has completely threw out a multinational company and today he is the sole manufacturer, sole supplier in India, Pakistan, Nepal, all uh, you know these uh, uh, countries around India. Uh, previously multinational company was doing and today he is the sole uh, manufacturer because he could manufacture that machine at one third of the cost that was uh, uh, that the American company was uh, making, charging. So this is how a lot of innovations, development are taking place in India. Only thing is we have to study and then uh, uh, understand India. So all my appeal to young friends is that you start studying India from our own perspective. You go and meet our people. Then we will have uh, idea about the functioning economic systems. Thank you very much.